Senor Juan Carlos Avila and his wife were enjoying a weekend cruise off the coast of South America. Their pleasure trip was interrupted by the sight of a raft drifting aimlessly on the sea. Three men appeared to be shipwrecked sailors, badly in need of help, and certainly harmless. They weren't. While Senor Avila and his wife were going through their ordeal only a few miles over the horizon, I was in the harbor, and I knew nothing about any of it. I had just completed my job, an underwater survey, and while waiting for my ship, I was trying to teach Nita Gallardo something about skin diving. She also wanted a ride on my sea scooter, and uh, what Nita wanted, she usually got. Nita's father was an important man. He was Minister of the Interior, Chief of Police, and uh, well, in charge of things generally. It was a lot of fun, a big improvement over the old-fashioned bicycle built for two. How'd you like that? It was wonderful, just like you. I heard the noise of an approaching boat and saw that it was Senor Gallardo's police launch heading toward us. Papa! What a country. You kiss a girl, her old man calls out the Navy. Gallardo was looking grim, and Nita assumed that his expression had something to do with us. We're stopping at the pier in a few minutes. Gomez will take you home. But, Papa, we just started. Besides, it wasn't Senor Nelson's fault that I... Well, that I... Uh, uh, well, what she's trying to tell you is it... Uh, uh, some uh, other time, if you talk mind. I have some important business to discuss with Senor Nelson. Official business. So will you excuse us, please? Yes, Papa. Senor Nelson, I am forced to request the loan of the machine. Also, I would like you to instruct some of my men in the use of the device. Uh, oh, uh, uh, what, uh, what, what do you mean? What is this all about? 
matter of the greatest urgency and most confidential. He told me about the kidnapping. Avila was an important foreign diplomat. He and his wife were being held hostage by three convicts who had escaped from a penal island off the coast. The convict leader, a man named Costa, was a vicious murderer, and the other two men were also hardened criminals. Gallardo had been in radio contact with Avila's boat, the Santa Rosa, and he now knew Costa's terms. Costa wanted fuel, arms, ammunition, money, and freedom from pursuit or interception as his price for the lives of his prisoners. Gallardo was to leave the stuff on a reef and then withdraw. Costa would pick it up at dawn and deposit Senor Avila's wife on the reef unharmed. Later, 30 miles beyond, and at the limit of Gallardo's territorial waters, Costa would set Avila himself adrift in a life raft. But Gallardo was afraid that Costa would kill his prisoners as soon as he received his supplies. I asked him how he knew that Avila and his wife weren't already dead. I made a bargain with Costa. I must speak with Avila himself regularly. Otherwise, our planes would blast the Santa Rosa to bits. Now, it, it, it's time to make the test. Gallardo calling the Santa Rosa. Gallardo calling the Santa Rosa. Come in, Santa Rosa. What do you want? A word with Senor Avila has agreed. Put him on. Put that away. If you please, Senor. Your friend wishes a word with you. Avila speaking. You are all right, Senor? You and the Senora? Yes, and they haven't harmed us. And all will be well. Try not to worry, my friend. We have great confidence in you. Many thanks. I will be talking to you in one hour again. Adios. Hasta entonces. Adios. Well done, senor. In an hour from now, with luck, you may still be alive to speak again. The job called for highly trained frogmen who could pull off a well-rehearsed commander-type operation but the time needed for training and rehearsal just wasn't there. My two pupils were tough, brave men and good swimmers, but they'd only had minor experience as skin divers. Gallardo and I planned for them to approach the Santa Rosa underwater after dark and to use the sea scooter. Then they were supposed to board the boat before Costa could kill his hostages. Two brave men against three desperate convicts. I didn't like the odds. Touch my wife. <laughs> Gallardo calling the Santa Rosa. Gallardo calling the Santa Rosa. Come in, Santa Rosa. Let him go. Repeat. Come in, Santa Rosa. Answer him. Then keep your filthy hands away from us. Avila speaking. Adios, gracias. You are all right? For the moment. Tell me, how long will these come live if you do not hear my voice? A few brief minutes, senor. As long as it takes for a plane to reach them and rip them to pieces with the bullets. I have the boat on our radar screen at all times. Muchas gracias, amigo. Until we speak again. My wife and I are going below. 
If you try that again, I will refuse to answer the radio. That's the well, senor. Tomorrow, we may keep your wife and leave you on the reef. and Paco were both too inexperienced, and the time at hand was too short. Still, in a few hours, they were going to be gambling their own lives and the lives of the Avalos. Senor Avila was a brave man. But courage alone wasn't enough. We won't have any trouble approaching the Santa Rosa if it's dark enough. And if we're deep enough. Well, the motor makes a noise, senor. Not when it's underwater. Now, uh, we'll be carrying our guns in plastic bags. So you want to make sure that uh, you take them out of the bags after we surface, huh? And where will we find the Santa Rosa? Of course, that will anchor near the reef, but we are supposed to leave the ransom. Oh, that's good. That's when we'll take him, when he's anchored. Exactly. We? Uh, oui. You are including yourself? Yes, I am. You got any objections? Senor Nelson, you have already done a great deal for us. I do not wish to endanger your life in a matter that does not concern you. Oh, it concerns me. How about you fellas? Uh, you don't mind if I go along with you, do you? No, senor. We're delighted to have you with us, if His Excellency permits. His Excellency permits, and with much gratitude. Senor Nelson, I must compliment my daughter on her good taste. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Your friends are in good health, I tell you. That's most fortunate for you. Now a word with Senor Avila, if you please. He stopped. About three miles due north. That means that uh, he's about a uh, quarter of a mile the far side of the reef. Good. How close do you want us to take you? Well, as far as you can without letting him spot us. Half speed ahead. No lights, no smoking, and keep it quiet. Get up there. And keep your eyes open. up on the far side of the reef. Costa calling Gallardo. Costa calling Gallardo. Full stop. Gallardo here. Go ahead. Back off and I'll kill the woman now. You have seen us. No, I'm sure he couldn't have. We better hold it here anyway. You're getting jumpy, Costa. Relax. I'm warning you, don't come any closer. We're at least a half a mile away. Do you think this is close enough? No, it isn't. But it's going to have to be. Marco, tie this rope real tight, huh? Do the same. 
Our guns were securely fastened to our belts in waterproof plastic bags. I signaled to the boat, and we started off. There were so many things that could go wrong, and I tried to anticipate everything. The night was in our favor. I figured on staying on the surface for about half the distance. This would make it easier to find our target. I wondered about the people for whom we were risking our lives. None of us had ever seen them, but we had all heard Avila talking to us, probably with a knife in his back. He had courage. I knew that for sure. I began to wonder what he looked like, and I told myself that was silly. It wasn't important. And I realized that it could be very important. I made a small prayer that Avila would be down in the cabin when we hit the deck. There wasn't going to be any time for swapping calling cards. Come up. Gallardo wants to talk with you. Over there. Gallardo? There was no call. I wanted you up here, close at hand. You know, Avila, animals can scent danger. Do you believe that there are men who can also smell its approach? I believe that you are an animal, if that is what you wish to know. I will enjoy killing you. Oh, you have such great courage. Right now you're holding all of it in your right hand. <laughs> now you're twice as brave. Juan Carlos, I beg of you, do not provoke him. Oh, the senora has a voice. Good. Before this is over, I will have the pleasure of listening to her. Beg and scream. What is that? Not yet, senora. I enjoy watching you on your knees, begging. signaled me that something was wrong and we surfaced at once. His regulator had stopped functioning. It seemed like a bad omen. He knew that he'd have to float there until after we had boarded the Santa Rosa before he could signal for help. We submerged again, leaving him behind us in the darkness.
got closer to the Santa Rosa, the danger of detection increased. We were almost directly beneath the Santa Rosa, and I was worried that the noise of our bubbles might give us away. our air lungs to the anchor line and removed all other unnecessary equipment. When we were ready to make our move, we surfaced. Nelson calling Gallardo. Come in, Gallardo. Senor Nelson, what happened? It's all over. The Avalars are okay. But we need help. Get over here right away. It was all over. Costa had been smart, but not quite smart enough. Ashore or afloat, on or under the sea, man is still the most dangerous creature. Hi there. I'm Lloyd Bridges. Skin diving is certainly a lot of fun, and it's full of adventure. See some more of it again next week, huh? When there'll be another excursion into that fabulous underwater world of Sea Hunt. <laughs>